I was known in the industry within 15 days for having the worst taste in the, uh, in the world. As long as they speak about you in this industry, you're okay. I was just a regular guy who thought about going out with the pretty girls and I had absolutely no idea what modeling was all about. I was in Paris, 24 years old, in the hotel where I stayed temporarily while I was waiting for my apartment to be ready, uh, stayed a photographer who brought in his models. And he used to say 10 times a day, you are an agent, you're meant to be an agent, you're perfect. I eventually listened to him and I opened my first agency in Paris. When I came into business, which was around 1970, the models were blonde, blue-eyed, no breasts, practically no curves. I ignore that and I introduced women with shape, short hair, brunettes, brown eyes, and that was very successful. I had the understanding of a guy who loved beautiful women, above all, who liked the sensuality of it all. All the other agents who were, in the vast majority, women or gay guys. They had their own approach, which in certain instances was probably superior to mine, but I had something which I thought was unique. I looked at my models as women. What were the things that were exciting, that were sensual, that were provocative, that had a, a, a touch of mischief? All these things made models for my agency a little bit more a forbidden fruit than those of some other agencies. Fashion is not about a Disney-like type of catalogish model. Fashion is about the really exciting girls that have something to say, that express something. Sometimes they're a little bit scandalous, like Kate Moss or Naomi Campbell or whoever it is. They're a little bit outrageous in their conduct maybe, but they're exciting and they're the ones that all the kids want to follow. Cindy Crawford, pose for Playboy. Here you have maybe the number one model in the world. Not afraid to take Herb Ritz, go and pose nude. And that's the type of thing we like to do. We were the first ones to really push our models to be presenters for MTV. We were the first ones to really go massively with the top models into the videos. It became a trend afterwards. We built personas, which became the supermodels, which became really exciting to the general public. You find out if a girl is really going to become a superstar before she becomes a superstar, but not necessarily very long before. It's like water that's gonna boil. Linda Evangelista was discovered by one of my scouts from Buffalo. This is a girl that I could never have thought she was gonna be, in my eyes, the best model I ever met in my 35 years of career. I consider her the best. Where I think that we were good was in the place where really, I believe an agent or manager should be good, which is in the formation years. In giving that direction, because once you have a cover of Vogue, and once your name is attached to big campaigns, to big products, it's easy to develop from that point on. It's getting you there. It's making those choices, saying no to a certain type of work and so on. I have enjoyed every minute of it. I think that I've been part in my own category of that world, and I've brought maybe an insight and attitudes which were provocative enough to, to change things a little bit, and that I'm very, very happy and very proud about. Hi, I'm John Casablancas, and you're watching Modelinia.